Perceive, process, perform. Do you need inspiration for your practice? Or do you simply need to practice inspiration? With this series, we aim to do both. Give us 15 minutes and we'll give you practice inspiration. Dr. Amy Donin is an international lecturer in preventing heart attacks, strokes, and diabetes. She is the co-founder of the Bail Donin Method and the co-principal lecturer and researcher for this method of cardiovascular disease prevention. The medical field is beginning to gain a much better understanding of the periosystemic link. In this brief session, Dr. Donin talks about dentistry's role in fighting cardiovascular disease. Hi, my name is uh, Dr. Amy Donine, and I am a family nurse practitioner and have my doctorate in nursing. I run the Heart Attack and Stroke Prevention Center in Spokane, Washington. I'm also the co-founder of the Bail Donine Method, and I'm an adjunct professor at Texas Tech University Health Sciences. Um, what I want to share with you today are, are a couple things related to heart attack and stroke prevention, and also where the dental community and the medical community join forces to reduce vascular inflammation for the ultimate benefit of the health of the patient. So, statistically, every 34 seconds, someone in this country is having a heart attack, and every minute, somebody is dying from one. From a stroke risk standpoint, it's just as tragic. Every 40 seconds, someone in this country is having a stroke. Every four minutes, someone is dying from one. If we don't do something different, we aim to spend $1.2 trillion um, by the year 2030 treating end-stage disease, catching people after they fall, doing rescue heroics, putting in stents, bypasses, um, all kinds of things, when really if we could step back and, and take a preventative approach, we can change these statistics, both financially and, and quality of life. Um, whose job is it? Is it mine because I run a heart attack and stroke prevention center? Or is it everyone who has the opportunity to join forces to affect inflammation, which is really the driver of not only the cause of vascular disease development, but also plaque rupture and subsequent thrombus formation? That's where we have really felt such a tremendous alliance with the dental community and we're asking for help to say please help us fight this disease called atherosclerosis. Uh, we can't do it alone on the medical side. We need the dental expertise to make it happen. Um, if we look at the arterial system, we have 60,000 miles of arteries in our body that feed nutrients to our brain, to our heart, to our kidneys, all the way down to our toes. And ultimately, if we get plaque anywhere in that highway system, it has the opportunity to misbehave. Plaque becomes a problem when it forms in the wall of the artery, virtually out of sight, out of mind. You don't feel it. And if that plaque ruptures, the body's autoimmune response to that is to send in a clot or a thrombus. And if that thrombus blocks the flow of blood in the brain, we'll call it a stroke. If it blocks the flow of blood in the heart, we'll call it a heart attack. And as I mentioned previously, that happens um, often, every 30 seconds roughly in this country. So atherosclerosis, part of the challenge, is it's silent until it presents itself with an event. And 64% of women who have an event had no idea that they had disease um, laying there ready to rupture at any time. And men, the statistic is about 50%. We do believe the technology is available to change that. We can find the disease before it becomes evident. About 158 years ago, Dr. Virchow published data to suggest that inflammation was both the driver of atherosclerotic development in the wall of the artery and also um, statistics have shown and data has shown that plaque rupture um, is driven by inflammation as well. So at the end of the day, anything that can drive vascular activity can drive atherosclerotic disease development. When we think about how do we remain healthy, how do we prevent heart attacks and strokes, it's really about keeping that highway system, that 60,000 mi miles of vessels, uh, free from inflammation. Um, we have an analogy, we say the best way to keep our heart and brain healthy is to keep our arteries cold. So it's a pretty aggressive goal when you think about all the reasons why those arteries can become inflamed. Uh, we measure labs in the clinical arena on the medical site all the time. Matter of fact, the most frequently measured labs that we look at are the inflammatory panels. And on average, I look at those with my patients about every three months. Um, what we've learned is that those inflammatory labs can be driven by both endodontic disease 
and periodontal disease, the gram-negative pathogens that feed both of those situations. Um, there are other reasons, lots of reasons, why inflammation in the vessels can occur, things like LDL oxidation, things like genetically driven lipid abnormalities like lipoprotein A, hypertension, obstructive sleep apnea, insulin resistance, psychosocial factors, all kinds of things can drive atherosclerotic disease development and inflammation. But two big factors that we are not skilled nor trained to treat are the ones that you treat, which are endodontic disease and periodontic disease. The data really is quite compelling that there's a direct association with what goes on in the mouth and that 60,000 mile highway system. And we're not alone in that the belief. The American Heart Association published in 2013 that what goes on in the gum line is directly associated with heart health. That's level A evidence, meaning they adjusted for everything else. And those gram-negative pathogens that drive gum disease and tooth decay also affect the vessels around the heart and systemically. Part of our goal is to bridge the gap between medicine and dentistry and get these two great fields of practice talking for the ultimate benefit of patients' wellness. Um, if you look at the incidence of periodontal disease, it's, it's almost striking the mirror that can occur with um, cardiovascular disease. The statistics that we have read um, suggest that over 70% of people over age 65 have some sort of form of periodontal disease. And the st statistics rather also suggest that men and women over age 30, about 50% of people have some form of periodontal disease. That mimics what we see with cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, um, et cetera. So we're really talking about the same disease state that you're seeing in the medical, ch um, medical arena, that you're also seeing in the dental arena. In other words, we're treating the same patients. Um, multiple studies have been published to support why the pathogens can cause vascular activity. Um, there's really about four ways that have been published that really suggest that those pathogens can not only um, affect arterial wall stability, but they can actually get in through the endothelial wall of the artery and raise havoc, if you will. This goes well beyond the, the idea that lipids are the only cause of vascular inflammation or blood pressure or lack of sleep. We have found these pathways to be quite phenomenal, really. Um, periodontal pathogens can affect toll-like receptors, and I'll talk about that briefly. They can affect direct endothelial damage to the artery wall. They can actually um, direct pathogens right through the endothelium and start to change macrophages and, and development within the intima media interface of arterial wall health. And there's a whole other uh, pathway that's being articulated well in the literature, and it talks about the adaptive immune system on how that creates vascular instability driven by gram-negative periodontal pathogens as well. Um, the toll-like receptor pathway in inflammation is quite interesting. So lipopolysaccharides, which is an exogenous way to turn on this toll-like receptor pathway, um, gram-negative pathogens such as AA, PG, TF, and TD as an example, those four gram-negative pathogens um, are lipopolysaccharides that can turn on this toll-like receptor pathway. When that toll-like receptor pathway is um, invigorated by this, this uh, channel of, of activity and it doesn't stop, all of a sudden it becomes maladop maladaptive, if you will. The body can't deal with it and what happens is an inflammatory cascade that then makes the patient vulnerable to endothelial, f fragile endothelial walls and therefore plaque development and also, scaringly so, plaque rupture, subsequent thrombus formation. So that's just one of many ways. Other studies have shown that if those bacteria actually are introduced to endothelial cells um, through carotid endarterectomies, we find out that cellular death occurs, a proliferation of inflammatory cells ensue to try to fight that infection, if you will, on the endothelial wall. And all of a sudden, we have an environment that places that patient in a fragile state for plaque rupture and subsequent heart attack and stroke risk, all driven by periodontal disease, which those of us on the medical side are not trained to identify properly and we're not trained to treat it. That's why we are really asking to partner with the dentists um, in the country who really appreciate the merit of their work, which is really a life-saving science. So 
when we look at the idea of periodontal disease affecting cardiovascular risk factors, I'm only going to mention briefly for the sake of time that we have data to show that periodontal disease can directly change intima media thickness, which is the wall of the artery is documented by a carotid intima media thickness change. And when those periodontal um, bacteria are eradicated, we see a improvement in the arterial wall thickness as documented by CIMT. It's a really big statement to make, um, suggesting that if we remove Remove the stimulus of the inflammation, we can see biology improve, which is ultimately the key to good health. Um, the other thing that we know is certainly these gram-negative bacteria through the INVEST trial actually show hypertension changes, blood pressure changes in our patients on the medical side. As much as nine millimeters of mercury systolic elevation and a five millimeter mercury diastolic elevation due to a periodontal infection. And yet we on the medical side are wondering should we treat this blood pressure problem with more medication or really should they get to a dentist who can identify those factors um, and treat the periodontal disease and see the blood pressure get better, which is ultimately another um, connection between this whole relationship. So when we look further at this idea, one of the calling cards that we have in medicine is to crave a unified definition of periodontal disease and endodontic health. Um, studies by Dr. Pessy, which took 101 individuals who actually had a heart attack, um, and they found that upwards, upwards, it's not conclusive, of 50% of acute MIs in this study could have been provo provoked by a asymptomatic periapical abscess, also puts endodontic disease into the arena of heart attack and stroke prevention as well, perhaps even more so due to the acuteness and chronicity of that infection as well. Regardless of all of that, we in medicine are asking for your help. Um, when we send a patient to you, we are asking for a very, um, simple yet complex um, objective definition of, of periodontal disease and endodontic disease. When I send a patient to my dental health professional, I am asking for a cone beam 3D x-ray to look for any asymptomatic periapical abscesses. I'm asking for oral DNA through PCR analysis to find out if there's any gram-negative pathogens and at what level and which are they um, and how bad are they. I'm also asking for the genetic side of this, looking at the acquired and innate immunity cascade that that individual patient has. Those tests are done in the dental arena. And the fourth thing that I would request is a unified perioprobe and a, and a chart that we can put in the medical chart so we have objective data to follow. That's talking the same language on medicine. We live and die by lab results. And so to ask a dentist the health of the gum line without receiving that information objectively, it's very hard for us to talk the same language, which is ultimately patient's health. So we are on a journey together, and that is medicine and dentistry joining forces for the health of that 60,000 mile system called the arterial system in the human body. And remember that strokes and heart attacks are definitely preventable, but I don't think we'll change the ultimate statistic of people dying from this disease every minute unless we join forces and medicine steps up and realizes that dentistry is in the business of saving lives and ultimately periodontal disease is a medical c condition with a dental solution. So thank you so much for your willingness to partner with us and thank you for recognizing your work as life-saving.